Hi guys, it's Rachel and I'm here for more tips to help you get settled here in Canada. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the first five things that you need to do once you arrive in Canada. But before that, let's have some coffee. Okay, now that I've had my cup of joe, let's jump right into it. Una una, you have to get your sin. If you guys come here on a study permit, a work permit, or even land as a permanent resident in Canada, you need to get your sin right away. Sin stands for social insurance number, and all I know is important ito when you want to start working in Canada. Literal guys, like pagkalabas ko ng airport at sinundo ako na akin relatives, we drove straight to Service Canada to apply for my sin. When you have a valid SIN kasi, you also have access to all of the government's programs and benefits. Prime example of this is when you're applying for a CERB. When COVID happened, a lot of people got laid off from their jobs and the government's response to this is by setting up CERB or the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit Program. In this program, if you got laid off from your job during COVID, you are eligible to receive up to $2,000 per month for not working. Of course, you'd still need to check the requirements to see if you're eligible under the program. But again, this is one of the benefits of having a valid SIN during this time. You need to when you're filing for taxes. So the good thing about this is that if you are a low-income earner, it's possible for you to get a tax return. When I worked here part-time and I was earning minimum wage, I filed for my taxes the following year and I got a tax return of 1,000 Canadian dollars. So it's not that bad. Anyway, the main point here is having your sin right away is your starting point to enjoy all of the benefits of being a temporary or permanent resident of Canada. Next on our list is getting a phone and plan while you're here in Canada. Shepherd, you want to stay connected while you're adjusting to a new setting or exploring a new country. So I use my phone to keep my relatives updated on my whereabouts while I'm outside. And if I have questions, I can easily call and text them. I'm a student here as well and I commute to school. So I usually turn on my cellular data while I'm outside so I can get real-time info or directions on how to get around the city. Eventually, I ended up upgrading my plan because at that time, I only had like two gigabytes worth of data and that wasn't enough for me when I was using my data outside. I signed up with Freedom during Black Friday because they usually have the best deals. What I can say about the courier service is that it does its job really well when it's inside the metro or within the metro, but if you go out to the boonies or the outskirts of Metro Vancouver, it tends to lose reception. So I signed up with Freedom for two years and I ended up getting the iPhone 11 Pro Max. My monthly tab is currently at $130 per month and yes, that's considered quite expensive. I mean, it's Apple number one and second, it's a brand new phone model, so it makes sense paying for that price. And when I signed up with them, I paid zero upfront, so literally I'm paying for the phone as well. But yeah, I've used the flip out of this phone, so I feel like I've used the most for its price. And for me, it's worth it. Along with my plan that I got on Black Friday, I also get unlimited calls and texts nationwide, plus 10 gigabytes worth of data that I can use anywhere and anytime. So now I can watch my YouTube videos or stream Netflix while I'm outside. Anyway, my main point here is stay connected, get a phone and plan once you arrive in Canada. Okay, another important thing that you must get is a Compass card. This little guy is my ticket to exploring Metro Vancouver. I use this on the bus, on the trains, and even sea buses while I'm out exploring. I mainly got the Compass card because it offers the lowest transit fares. So nakakatipid ako when I'm using this compared to paying with cash or my Visa card. You can get this at most convenience stores. So I got mine at London Drugs and I basically just went up to the cashier or customer service requesting for the card. The Compass card costs $6, which is a refundable deposit, meaning if you're no longer using it, you can return it to its customer service locations and get your $6 back. 
Tapos, to make your life easier, sign up your card on their website, which I'll link below. So with that, you can easily load your card over the web in a couple easy steps. After that, you're all set and you're ready to explore Metro Vancouver. Okay, so next is by far the most adult thing that I've experienced so far since settling here, and that is opening a Canadian bank account. You don't need a lot of money to start. In fact, you can open a bank account here with zero funds in it, but it definitely helps to have the minimum balance for your checking account to help you waive for the monthly fees. I signed up with TD because it was one of the nearest banks to where I lived and at that time it was also one of the most known and reliable banks in Canada so I felt safe putting my money with them. What's great about most Canadian banks is that they also offer newcomer packages and international student packages to help you get settled right away. Eventually we moved again so I transferred my funds from TD to Scotiabank. Scotiabank also had really great interest rates for my saving and investing accounts. That's why I made my move there. Anyway, the main point here is to open a Canadian bank account, but make sure that the bank you sign up on fits your needs. Okay, so now last on our list, and it's by far the most important and the most boring one. Um, if you're new to Canada and will be staying here for over six months, it is required that you apply for an MSP or a medical services plan. MSP provides you with basic medical coverage. So one of the ways that I benefited from this program is when I would get a prescription from the doctor at zero cost. They also cover medically required services. So for example, you get into an accident and you need medical attention right away, MSP covers for it. Although the prescription from the doctor is covered, buying the prescription drug that your doctor prescribed is something that you'd also need to pay for. But things like going to the dentist for a filling when it's not an emergency, that's not covered. Other things that are not covered by MSP are getting prescription glasses, getting massage therapy, chiropractor, or any other cosmetic um, procedure that's something that you would have to pay for yourself. But for example, you start working and you have extended healthcare benefits, all of that is covered and so you don't need to worry about it. Anyway, on a more important note, if you sign up for MSP, it may take two to three months before you receive it. So the sooner you sign up, the better. Anyway, that's all we have for today. I hope that you find this information useful. Make sure to do these five steps right away once you land in Canada. Again, maraming maraming salamat for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!